David Smith, and welcome to Correctional Officer Lifestyle. Hey folks, David Smith, Correctional Officer Lifestyle. Right now, I am recording the weekly wrap-up video. I know the weekly wrap-up video was supposed to be done yesterday. But I spoke yesterday about the effects of working a double on the body, on your shift, on your staff, and speaking about it from the 12-hour shift model. So, um, I, I'm, I was answering a video that was put up by Anthony Ganji. He had Connie Eileen with him, which it, it was a good video, but they were talking about it from the eight hour shift model. And I gave my input about the 12 hour shift model because I thought it was important to do the 12 hour shift model. As a lot of correctional officer and a lot of correctional agencies operate with 12 hour shifts. So I'm going to do the week of wrap up now. All right, I was on midnight shift all week. Um, I am the relief captain. So midnight shift captain goes out on leave. I was on midnight shift. And the first night, man, we were stacked. We were stacked. We were staffed pretty good. Second night, we were staffed all right. The last three nights that I worked, staffing levels were <laughs> nightmarish. Um, like I mentioned in the video, you know, we, we can hold people for four hours. We can have people come in early. But that leaves a gap in the shift where there's not enough staff to conduct business. And it's those times where I, I get nervous, where I worry because bad things happen. When you put a bunch of criminally minded people, which the majority of inmates are criminally minded people. If they were not criminally minded people, they would not be in a correctional facility. Um, I would say, excuse me, I would say the vast majority of them desire to change and become better versions of themselves, become law abiding citizens. They don't want to be in prison anymore. So they're going to do what they can to change. They're going to do what they can to make themselves better. But there are those that don't care. And it's those that I worry about because there was a line in a movie um, that I thoroughly enjoyed. And the line is, the person is smart, but people are dumb, panicky animals. I have found that in corrections, the individual inmate, if you're talking one-on-one -on -one to an individual inmate, you can hold a meaningful conversation with no problem, nine times out of 10. You can hold a meaningful conversation. They might not know anything about your areas of interest, but if you take the time to listen to them and engage them about their areas of interest in an effort to effect positive change, you can find that the majority of inmates, when it comes to what they know about, are rather intelligent. And they will talk to you intelligently. But it is my experience that when you get a bunch of people in a group, they're going to listen to the loudest least disciplined person of the group. They are going to gravitate towards the one that is getting the most attention. And nine times out of 10, that's the loudest one. 
regardless of excuse me regardless of what kind of attention it is if that person's getting attention everybody's going to jump on board with him which is why we we preach in the department to gain control of an out of control inmate of a hostile inmate the first thing you need to do is separate him and we're not saying separate him so that it's you know we, we increase the odds in our favor it's separate him to get that one-on-one -on -one interaction to get that to get that inmate out of the group mentality, to get that inmate out of the mindset of the mob mentality, if you will, to bring him back down to a personal level, a one-on-one -on -one level, and de-escalate the situation. That is the reason that we, we segregate the inmates when they are hostile. It's to get them out of that mob mindset. Fortunately, none of that had to occur over the last week. None of that had to occur. It was it was a good weekend. I say it was a good uh, it was a good week. And the reason I can honestly say it was a good week, nobody got hurt. Nobody died. We were all able to go home under our own power. And everything ended well. So we had a good week. As far as outside of work, I've been to the gym a few times. Uh, my schedule, flopping and flipping the way that it does, does not lend for a lot of gym time, which I miss. I love going to the gym. But I found out that I'm relatively weak right now. My bench press has suffered because I have nursed the shoulder back to health. Um, I can bench press with no pain. I got on the flat bench first time in a long time this week, and I can actually bench press with no pain, but I have no strength. I doubt I could bench 315 right now. I don't think I could get it up. I don't think I could press 315 right now. It'll come back. As long as I don't re-injure the shoulder, it'll come back. But I'm also 50 years old, and I'm wondering how much... How much strain do I want to put on an already injured shoulder? We'll see what happens. Squats are right online. I don't deadlift anymore. Um, I don't deadlift heavy anymore. I do still deadlift. I do Romanian deadlifts. I do regular deadlifts. Uh, pen lay rows is first part of that's deadlift. Um, clean and jerk snatch, I do all that, and all that includes deadlift, but I don't deadlift as heavy as I used to. Um, 600 pounds is out of the cards for me anymore. I'm, I'm probably never going to see that, but that's okay. I'm all right with that. I'm still nine times out of ten in the gym that I go to, I am still the strongest man that walks in the room, and I'm good with that. Um... Artwork's coming along fine. I've got a project that I'm working on. I'm not really able to talk about it because the project is for an upcoming event that I'd like to try to keep under wraps, if you will. Um, still trying to raise the money for Ken's tuition. In the vein of that, I've got an Etsy shop now where I'm selling t-shirts and the t-shirts are motivated around corrections and weightlifting and you know just things that you can do for recreation to get you away from the department for a little while you know it's etsy.com slash co lifestyle i'll leave a link down in the comments folks that's all i got for this one um leave me some comments let me know what you think if you like what you see, make sure you hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And certainly hit that bell for notification when I post new videos. Alright, as always, I'm on a campaign right now. 
that love shouldn't hurt. If you are in an abusive relationship, find help. There is help for you. There's help to get you out of it. There is help to make the violence stop. If you're in an abusive relationship, if you know somebody in an abusive relationship, oftentimes you can be called upon to be that help. If you know the abuser in an abusive relationship, remember the absolute worst thing you can do is nothing. Say something to somebody. And if you are the abuser in an abusive relationship, the violence has to stop. There is help for you too. All right? You have to first admit that you need the help, and then you have to ask for it. But there is help for you. Okay? This is David Smith at Correctional Officer Lifestyle. Remember, I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. Y'all be safe behind the fence. I'll see you later.